Uh, this subcommittee will come to order, and uh, I should let you know we have new microphones here, so make sure you turn the button on uh, if you're going to speak. Brand new system seems to be working out pretty well, but uh, please uh, let me uh, join everybody here in welcoming Mr. Valadeo uh, back to the subcommittee. We're glad to, glad to have you back. Uh, so today we're going to consider uh, the fiscal year 2016 funding for the military construction, uh, veterans affairs and related agencies. I certainly uh, greatly appreciate uh, the participation and support of our subcommittee members of both sides of the aisle as we consider priorities uh, and funding levels uh, for the important programs in our bill. Uh, we analyzed the budget request, uh, developed uh, a lot of questions, held five oversight hearings uh, to uh, hear directly from members of all the services, Department of, uh, Depart uh, Department of Defense Leadership, the Secretary of the VA, uh, the VA Inspector General, and directors of uh, our four related agencies. Uh, we received over 700 requests uh, from uh, members, uh, again, all sides of the aisle, uh, and uh, gave full consideration to each one. It's been a pretty busy spring. Uh, and uh, as we consider the bill, I, I can't uh, proceed any, any further without uh, noting the uh, subcommittee has an incredible uh, level of support from the, the chair and the ranking member. I really want to thank them for all that they do. Chairman Rogers, uh, ranking member uh, Lowy, uh, on behalf of the subcommittee, uh, let me uh, again tell you how meaningful your attention, uh, your attention and oversight and genuine care about our military and veterans is. Uh, we really treat, appreciate all that you're, you're doing uh, to help us with this, this subcommittee. And I uh, also want to thank uh, Mr. Bishop. It's been a real pleasure to work uh, with the gentleman from Georgia. He's uh, knowledgeable. He's engaged. Uh, and, and he's determined to maintain uh, diligent oversight. And, he, and I, I should note, he does it all with a smile. And, uh, and uh, so it's, uh, this is my first time as chairman of the subcommittee, and I really feel privileged to serve with him and beside him. And if I make any errors, he'll be sure to re remind me. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so we have some great staff helping us here today. Uh, Matt Washington, uh, Sue Quanchis, uh, Sarah Young, Tracy Russell, Maureen Hallahan. Uh, all on the committee staff, and uh, Sean Snyder on my personal staff, and I, we couldn't do this job without all of them. So to summarize the legislation, uh, this legislation, I believe, demonstrates our uh, firm commitment to fully supporting the nation's veterans and service members. Our investment of nearly $77 billion uh, for military construction in VA is 6 percent over last year's level, which is unprecedented. Uh, the bill uh, provides comprehensive support uh, for service members, military families, and veterans. It supports our troops uh, with the facilities and service members uh, necessary to maintain readiness and morale at bases here in the states and around the world. It provides for the Defense Department schools and health clinics uh, that take care of our military families. Uh, and the bill also funds our veteran health care system to ensure that our promise to care for those who have sacrificed in defense of our, our nation uh, continues as those men and women uh, return home. Uh, we owe this to our veterans and are committed to sustained oversight of so the programs uh, deliver what they promise, and taxpayers are well, serviced, uh, well served by uh, the investments that we make. On the military construction side, uh, the bill provides for a total of $7.6 billion uh, for military construction uh, project and, and family housing, including uh, base and overseas contingency operation funding, OCO funding, uh, an increase of $904 million above the enacted fiscal year 2015 level and $755 million uh, below uh, the President's uh, request. Uh, the fu uh, this funding uh, meets uh, DOD's most critical needs, including uh, priority projects uh, and for uh, combatant commanders in uh, European Command, uh, CENTCOM, AFRICOM, and, uh, and, and the Pacific Command. Uh, it provides uh, $607 million for uh, military medical facilities. It provides $334 million for Department of Defense educational facilities for construction and renovation of 10 schools. Uh, it supports uh, our Guard and Reserve through $512 million. Uh, for facilities in, in 28 states. That's uh, particularly important in my district. Uh, it fully funds uh, military family housing at uh, $1.4 billion, uh, and it provides $150 million for uh, the NATO Security Investment Pro uh, Program, which is uh, $30 million uh, above the President's request. Uh, on the VA side of the, uh, the equation here, the legislation is, uh, includes a total of $163.2 billion in combined discretionary and mandatory funding uh, for the Department. Uh, discretionary funding alone uh, for veterans programs in the bill is at uh, $68.7 billion. Uh, total fiscal year 2016 discretionary funding is uh, $3.6 billion above fiscal year 2015 and $1.4 billion uh, below uh, the budget request. Uh, $3 billion of this increase was uh, advance funded. 
uh, on VA medical services. Uh, the bill funds VA medical services at $48.6 billion. Uh, that includes uh, $970 million that the VA uh, came back and asked for uh, on top of the advance funding from, from last, last year. Uh, we stretched pretty far to do that. Uh, we haven't funded uh, this second bite in uh, House action before, so this is a first. And, and certainly tough to find $970, billion, uh, $970 million in uh, any uh, budget environment, but uh, this committee uh, did, and uh, showing again uh, the level of bipartisan commitment we have uh, to our veterans. Uh, on disability claims, uh, we provide uh, the full request for the Veterans Benefits Administration, uh, which is uh, $163 million of, uh, increase over uh, fiscal year 2015, and the full request uh, for the Board of uh, Veterans Appeals. Uh, the bill will en enhance transparency and accountability and at, at the VA through uh, uh, further oversight and increase for the VA Office of Inspector General's independent audits and investigations, and uh, they've been very busy. There was a report just uh, released today uh, affecting the Philadelphia uh, VBA facility. Uh, the legislation also contains uh, $233 million uh, for the modernization of the VA electronic health record, which I know is very important to every member here, and the chairman has been very uh, vocal about uh, this issue. And it includes language restricting uh, uh, funding until uh, the VA demonstrates progress on the system's uh, uh, functionality and interoperability. Uh, on construction issues, uh, major construction within the VA is funded at $562 million, which is the same level as fiscal year 2015. Uh, the bill provides funding for hospital replacement and allows uh, the VA to continue to correct uh, seismic safety issues and deficiencies, which I know is, again, of concern to many members in this community, uh, in this committee. Uh, we did not fund the uh, uh, more than double budget request for construction as we face the impact of uh, gross mismanagement uh, of the Colorado VA hospital uh, construction, which uh, resulted in a $930 million uh, cost overrun. That, that's, that's, not a, that's not a typo, $930 million cost overrun. Uh, yeah, this is Denver. This is Denver. Uh, we've also cracked down on oversight, and Denver is not the only problem that we have, but that's the most uh, egregious. Uh, and. Uh, I hear regularly from our Colorado colleagues, I can assure you that. Uh, in closing, um, uh, this is a solid you know, bipartisan bill that's focused on the needs of our, our service members, veterans, and, and all their families. Uh, we are $4.6 billion over the fiscal year 2015 level, which is nearly 6%. Uh, we have uh, provided for our, our military and our, our veterans to do the very best level we, we can. And uh, uh, did we fund every last uh, Dime requested, uh, no. Uh, not every idea has merit, and not every project is mission critical. Uh, we, we did not fund some projects. Uh, we, we cut some requested increases, obviously, and we rescinded funds. Uh, these were fair decisions, and uh, <clears throat> part of our responsibility is, uh, as appropriators, and I, I certainly would urge my, my friends and colleagues here to support the bill. Uh, support for this bill is a vote for support of our service members, our military families, and the over 48 million individuals served by the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn to my, my friend and distinguished uh, colleague, uh, Mr. Bishop, uh, for his uh, opening remarks. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on making it through your first hearing cycle uh, as chairman uh, in your first subcommittee markup. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for the cooperative tone that you have set uh, from day one. Uh, I believe that uh, you've worked very hard to get us to this point, and I'm pleased with several aspects of the bill. For example, uh, the bill maintains uh, a tough uh, but fair reporting requirement, uh, uh, well, requirements uh, for the electronic health records endeavor. Uh, the bill continues to prioritize the elimination of the claims backlog and includes steps to keep the Board of uh, Veterans' Appeals ahead of the curve. Uh, I think all of these are positive steps uh, to making the VA function mm -hmm. better. Uh, furthermore, the bill does not contain any poisonous policy riders, which uh, makes for a much less contentious work product. Uh, so we thank you for that. Uh, however, Mr. Chairman, uh, we sat through hearing after hearing, and we listened to witnesses testify on the FY16 budget and how its goal was to end sequestration and fully reverse the cuts uh, to domestic priorities in uh, uh, 2016. Unfortunately, uh, the majority's budget resolution chose to lock in these lower levels and to use gimmicks uh, to boost uh, defense funding. 
uh, because of the budget resolution's failure to provide relief from these budget caps, which were established in uh, 2011 and later adjusted in 2013, uh, you, uh, Mr. Chairman, were forced to make some tough choices uh, due to the allocation that, that you were given. Uh, even though uh, we are seeing uh, moderate increases above the enacted level, uh, I believe that's still uh, an inadequate allocation. Uh, for example, the request for VA major construction is basically cut in half, and I'm concerned that this uh, reduction will further contribute to the gaps in access, utilization, and safety uh, that were already identified uh, in the VA's annual uh, SCIP process. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to point out uh, also that the FY17 advanced funding is going to eat up $4.6 billion of the non-defense discretionary cap. Uh, so next fiscal year, the problem will only get worse if we continue to ignore the problem uh, by having these budget caps. Uh, I believe that it's well past time for us to be more strategic about how we handle uh, the federal budget, and the time is now uh, to take the next step and stop lurching from crisis uh, to crisis. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a first step and a long process, and I'm concerned about the impact that these reductions could have, and I believe that they ultimately will have to be addressed uh, as we move through the process. Uh, I'd be remiss if I did not join you in thanking the staffs uh, uh, on both sides of the aisle for all of uh, their hard work, because uh, we couldn't do it without them, and uh, they've done a tremendous job. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, you're back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishop, um, for those c comments. And, and uh, at this time, I'd, I'd like to recognize the full chairman uh, of, the, of the Appropriations Committee, uh, Mr. Rogers of Kentucky. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on, uh, on chairing your first uh, markup and, and hearing schedule. Uh, you've done an excellent job of working with uh, Ranking Member Bishop, uh, working together to uh, write a Military Construction Veterans Affairs and Related Agencies Bill for 016. Uh, you're only the second, you are the second uh, subcommittee to uh, mark up. We marked up the other one uh, earlier this morning, uh, Energy and Water. But we've given you uh, poll position number two, and uh, it's a fast track. It's dry weather. You've got a great poll position, and uh, and I'm betting on you. <laughs> See, we're, we're talking horses, not basketball <laughs> today, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay. I don't want to talk basketball right now. <laughs> uh, the members, uh, you've, you've worked hard on this bill. You've, I, I think you've got a balanced uh, bipartisan bill that uh, addresses the current and future needs of our veterans and uh, funds critical construction priorities for uh, DOD. Um, the bill provides funding for essential services our, our service members and their families depend on. Access to quality schools, hospitals, housing, it fulfills our commitment to these brave men and women on active duty and ensures that after they've served honorably, our veterans have access to the medical care, job training, education, and other benefits that have been guaranteed them by the, uh, the, their government. Uh, there's no question um, VA has struggled to meet this obligation in recent years. <coughs> paying an unacceptable disservice to our veterans and their families. This committee has worked hard to support the VA as it turns the tide to redress years of mismanagement. And this bill is another fine example of our commitment in that respect. I'm particularly pleased that uh, you've continued to prioritize reducing the disability claims backlog. You, you provide an additional 163 million uh, over fiscal 15 for that initiative, including 141 million for the digital scanning, digital scanning of health records. This funding will help speed up the claims process and get VA back on track. I visited one of those centers recently where they're digitizing huge files of veterans, uh, 
disability claim. And they're digitizing those at an absolutely amazing speed. That will enable the hearing officers all across the country to be able to exchange instantly information about those files rather than trucking that file across the country for two weeks to get to the other spot. So I have great hopes that that's really going to speed up the process, already is. Uh, in addition, the bill will ensure that the VA is moving forward in improving its electronic health record system and is working hand in hand with DOD on achieving an interoperable e-health platform. Uh, and that is, is absolutely critical. Up until now, as we've discussed in this subcommittee, uh, the uh, veteran who goes, uh, who goes to a VA hospital uh, does not have access to his active service medical records. Uh, a, a failure of the DOD and VA to uh, make their two systems interoperable. And you're addressing that point big time. Uh, and I think it's beginning to uh, shape up. I had a meeting a while back with the staff working on that. And uh, I, I see a ray of hope, uh, but it's not here yet. Uh, Bill also increases <laughs> information technology funding over 15 levels. You'll move the ball forward on ensuring that all veterans, including those with disabilities, have access to VA online services, wherever they may be. Finally, uh, the bill exercises key oversight mechanisms, ensuring that VA is held accountable for the gross mismanagement of pain medication prescriptions that have led to rapid and deadly misuse of prescription opioids leading to overdose deaths. Uh, this bill calls on VA to end the cycle of abuse and mismanaged prescriptions and ensure that our veterans receive responsible pain management under VA supervision. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think you've put together a good bill. It's fair and balanced. Uh, it addresses uh, some of the more egregious problems with VA. Uh, I think it's legislation we all can and should support. And I urge the committee, uh, subcommittee to uh, promptly report the bill to the full committee. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And before I recognize the distinguished uh, ranking member, Mr. Lowy from New York, I just wanted to mention that uh, if you have the opportunity, please uh, sit down with some of the, the, the VA staff about this integrated health record. They have a demonstration. It's worth, worth viewing. Uh, with that, I'd like to recognize our good friend, Mrs. Lowy from New York. I want to thank our distinguished Chairman Dent and wish you well in your new responsibilities. Uh, ranking member Bishop, who continues to do an outstanding job, and of course, my partner, Chairman Rogers, it's a pleasure to begin the process, and I look forward to success. Uh, next week, our full committee will meet to vote on all 12 subcommittee allocations. As my colleagues are aware, the House Majority's budget resolution, which gives this committee its overall budget, was opposed by every member on my side of the aisle. Quite simply, it was inadequate. And we much preferred the approach taken by the President calling for an end to the sequester and more reasonable and realistic budgeting that will grow our economy and giving hard-working Americans opportunity to succeed. The Republican budget resolution has consequences that will be profoundly illustrated as each appropriations bill is unveiled. Chairman Dent has worked in a collegial, collective, and cooperative way, but he faces extremely difficult funding levels that seem to have forced compromises no one wants to make on any important service provided in this bill. The chairman should be commended on several aspects of this bill, namely the continued commitment to the VISTA Evolution Electronic Health Record System and continued work to ensure interoperability with the Department of Defense future electronic health care records system. My good chairman has um, waxed eloquent on this issue. I think we had at least four hearings on this issue. We both have witnessed the boxes of records. And as we discussed many times in the past, it just seemed 
unbelievable that they couldn't get this right. But we have faith. And hopefully, hopefully, this will get done. And I want to thank the chair for prioritizing resources to eliminate the veterans' claims backlog in 2015. Currently at 180,000 cases over 125 days old. Our veterans deserve better. Expanding access to medical facilities, increasing the number of qualified medical personnel, improving health care services under the Veterans Access Choice and Accountability Act will further demonstrate our unwavering support to those who serve in defense of our nation. But there are also difficult shortfalls caused by the inadequate allocation. Even with a modest increase over the enacted level, the bill is $2.7 billion below the President's request. If these cuts were to stand, our ability to make necessary investments into aging, operational, and medical facilities would be diminished. And instead of providing all the money necessary for medical services and support accounts, this bill would rely on questionable transfers from other priorities to make up for any shortfalls. I know not everything requested by the President is sacrosanct, and I respect and support this committee's ability to evaluate each and every line item in a budget proposal. But I hope we can all recognize that there are accounts that are legitimately underfunded and will need to be addressed. Again, I want to thank Chairman Dent for his work, his leadership. I look forward to additional discussions as the bill progresses. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Mr. Farr? We have comments. Yeah, I was just about to move into that, that <laughs> very point. I was going to ask if there's any further discussion on the bill, if any member wishes to make any comments, offer any comments, or uh, potentially uh, amendments on the measure before us. So with that, we recognize Mr. Farr. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm, I think I'm the senior longest member on this committee. Um, I've been through a lot of chairmen, and I want to congratulate you. This is a, was a, I wish we'd had more hearings, and, I, and I'm going to suggest one for a, an interim hearing. But um, if this is the only committee in either house of the Congress that has both the Veterans Affairs and the Department of Defense. So that continuum of military people, because you can't be in the Veterans Affairs without having passed through the Department <coughs> of Defense. And this idea that we had to have more interoperability and connection is absolutely keen. We're the only committee, when you think about it, that is responsible for the infrastructure of all military and veterans facilities uh, all over the world. And it's the only infrastructure process which isn't bottom-up started, like all our transportation improvements and things like that. So it's a fascinating one, and one of the things where we get into a, and, a, and I want to compliment you because you've put some language in there. I, I think I've probably been experienced more BRAC than any <laughs> member of Congress to become the expert on BRAC. If you're going to have one, uh, <laughs> let me know. I'll, but what we've suggested in the language that you've did, the department, when they put together the next BRAC round, which we'll, 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 we'll finally get around to approving, that they give us a lot more information than just the military side, we've got to close this, not telling you why the recipient of the community, what assets are there, they don't even know in all their bases. And uh, what have they done to attempt to try to share those? We've discussed the veterans sharing with Department of Defense uh, more medical facilities and things like that. I think there's a lot of efficiencies that can be gained by uh, joint partnership. My city of Monterey, which has the Defense Language Institute, which is about 4,000 linguists, and the Naval Postgraduate School is now providing what they call all the base operations, all the infrastructure for those bases, saving the Army about and, and the Navy uh, excess of millions of dollars and uh, providing employment for that community. And they're doing a better job, according to all the people on base. And those are things that I think we ought to take advantage of. And, you, and we put some language in here to do that. We have a defense communities a caucus that is very interested in these partnerships. So I want to. <coughs> Thank you very much for uh, allowing us to put that language in there. And, and um, I look forward. Now, one of the things I would suggest is that what we've learned from the Department of Veterans Affairs is that they've also grown tremendously. I mean, the leadership both both sides of the aisle have always put more, more money into 
Department of Veterans Affairs. They have a lot of facilities, a lot of them are old. We, we know that they underserve the rural areas. Most of us on this committee represent rural areas. Our veterans don't get the kinds of services that they get in a major urban area with a military hospital and so on. So I think we ought to consider having uh, a BRAC-like discussion for VA because they can get a lot more efficiencies in developing partnerships with the civilian community and providing uh, uh, medical services, particularly to veterans in really rural areas that have a tough time getting to a, a, a regional clinic or a regional hospital, sometimes hundreds of miles away. And I think there's a lot of savings there, and there's probably excess property that the veterans have, and they ought to be going through that kind of scrubbing that we're now asking the Department of Defense to do. So you might want to consider having a hearing on that. Yeah. Well, if I may, um, I, I will tell you that uh, veterans' choice is extremely important to me. I'm very much dedicated to better integrating the civilian and veterans' health systems. Uh, this is a continuing problem in my community. I've, I've raised this issue at every, virtually every hearing or appropriate, uh, but uh, I think yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not finished with that issue by any means. Uh, it, I, I experience the same problems that you're, you're having. The biggest complaint I receive from my veterans, they want, to, they want to be able to receive care in the communities where they live, as opposed to having to make uh, great trips either to, up to Wilkes-Barre or to Philadelphia or to New York City from, uh, from my community, which is a, a hardship on the, on the service members and their families. So I'm very much dedicated to the, uh, to the choice issue, and I've been talking at length with the authorizers about making sure more veterans are, have access uh, to the program and they're, they're simply not eligible. So, Any other uh, comments on, on the legislation or? Uh, Ms. Lee? I'll turn a switch there. There's a, uh, is there a button there. You got it. working to make sure that, um, of course, our veterans uh, receive the, the benefits and the, the services that they so deserve. There was, and several issues have been raised in uh, the hearings, and I want to raise one, which I, and I have to thank you for hearing Congressman Farr and myself and following up from that hearing, and that had to do with the lack of um, available um, family therapists for our veterans and the certification process. And, how, and we all know our veterans need these services desperately, but yet uh, it's been very difficult to fill these positions. And so under your leadership and our ranking member's leadership, along with Mr. Farr, we were able to put language into this bill that hopefully will begin to address the, the vacancies, first of all, that exist, but primarily the services will begin to be provided to our veterans who need these mental health Thank you very much for doing that in the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Mr. Fortenberry. Chairman, well, thank you as well for creating a, a, a hardworking but collegial atmosphere in the bill as is being expressed by our friends on the other side. I want to commend particularly Mr. Farr who in pointing out that he has perhaps the largest body of collected wisdom here given the number of years he's served on the committee. Uh, but his, his real willingness to share his insights, and one in particular, uh, through your leadership and our committee process, we learned much more about what is now called the Monterey model, where bases are integrating services from the community on bases that are not necessarily consistent with military mission, but actually strengthens that relationship with the, with the community. I took that immediately back home to uh, my base community, and was it was very, well, very, very well received. So this is a new fairly new endeavor started by Sam, but hopefully will be integrated across the country quickly as more bases learn how to do this, saving money, strengthening community ties. But I want to create, I want to just acknowledge your entrepreneurial policy creativeness, Sam, and your willingness to share it. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Farr, yeah, thank you too, Mr. Farr. He, he went over uh, the Monterey complex with me. It's uh, very impressive what they, <laughs> I, I think that uh, might be worth a visit. And, uh, we have to brush up on foreign languages if we go there too. I know. Uh, so, any other uh, comments or discussion on on the legislation? If not, uh, is there a motion? I move that the bill be favorably reported to the full committee. Thank you. Uh, 
All those in favor of the motion uh, will signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying nay. Opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. Uh, the motion is approved. Uh, I ask unanimous consent that the staff be permitted to make technical and conforming changes uh, to the measure just approved. Uh, please ensure that the uh, materials, please uh, make sure that the materials before you are returned to the subcommittee, uh, to the subcommittee staff be, uh, before you leave the room today. And uh, also, just want to remind everybody that uh, on uh, Monday, the May, May the 12th, we're, we're going to have a visit over to the Arlington Cemetery. So you're all invited. We'd love to have you attend. That's a travel day. I think we're talking about uh, 12 to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So Arlington Cemetery. Thank you very much. This uh, subcommittee meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Al. Are you going to send that out?